The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. There was once a young boy uh, living in Israel, and this boy struggled to study Torah. He tried his hardest, this kid. And the rabbi in his school, in his elementary school, saw that all the other kids are learning, and this kid, nothing's going in. So he was a great ra- a great rabbi, a good uh, teacher. He said to this kid, you know what, I see you're struggling. I'm going to meet with you every day after school. We're going to learn the Gemara that we spent the time studying in class. We're going to, we're going to spend extra, we're going to get it, we're going to get there. The rabbi spends an entire year with this boy. And after, towards the end of the year, it's his last year in, in elementary school, the rabbi can't understand it. It's like the boy has not made any progress at all. He's trying every day. He's staying after school. Which kid wants to stay after school? The first thing you want to do, school's out, chalas, you're running. He decides he's going to take the boy to one of the great gedolim that we lost recently, Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky in Bnei Brak. He goes to the rabbi, he sits down with the rabbi, he says, Rabbi, I brought this kid here. The kid is struggling to learn. Nothing goes in. The kid has a head like a stone. I don't know what to do. The rabbi says, well, you know what you need to do? You need to try hard. You need to put in extra effort. The rabbi says, that's not it. I'm telling you, the kid is putting in extra effort every single day, no complaints. He sits, he tries his hardest, no, it's, nothing's working. The rabbi says, strokes his beard, he says, okay, you know what he needs to do? He needs to pray to be able to study. He says to the boy, have you ever prayed that you should have hatzlacha in your study? That you should be able to understand? You should be... The kid says, what do you mean? Every day I pray for this. The rabbi strokes his beard, he says, you know what? He says, tell me one thing, I want you to promise me. I want you to promise me that you're going to um, take on yourself to always pray with a minyan. Never to miss minyan, no matter how difficult it is. The kid thinks for a second. He says, okay, deal. A couple weeks later, the kid finishes school. He's such a nice boy. Such a, he tries so hard. He gets accepted to a really good yeshiva. A year goes by. A couple of years go by. Two years later, the rabbi sitting at home. is a knock at the door. This boy is at the door. He comes to the door. He says, rabbi, I got you something. And he hands him a, uh, a pamphlet on Masechet Yevamot. Anyone who studies Gemara will know the three hardest Masechtot in all of Shas are what's called Ani, which is a poor man. Because you go, you go in there, you can't, it's very hard to take, to, get to, to take that back home with you. Ani stands for which three Masechtot are the most difficult? Eruvin, Nida, and Yevamot. Ayin, Nud, Yud. Those are the three hardest. So on Yevamot... He gives him this big, this big, what's it called, kuntres, uh, this big uh, pamphlet on the thing. Rabbi opens it, he sees very deep ideas, beautiful new concepts, chidushet uh, Torah. He says, this is amazing. He says, thank you for such a gift, I really appreciate it. It's so nice that you have hakarat ato for me. He says, who wrote it? This is amazing stuff. And the kid says, Rabbi, I wrote it. The rabbi is blown away. The author of this has a, ch- has a capacity for understanding, for explanation, for new novel ideas. He says, you wrote this? And the boy smiles, the biggest smile you could imagine. And he says, yeah. He goes, I wrote this. And the rabbi, he says, I hate to ask you this, but what the heck happened? I, in eighth grade, you spent the time after every day, nothing. You know, when did this change? How did this change? And the boy says, with a big smile on his face. He says, I thought you deserved to hear, so I came straight to you from Yeshiva. He says, it was Erev Rosh Chodesh. He tells him exactly the day. He says, my friends and I went on a tiyul. We were off from Yeshiva. We went on a tiyul. We went up north. We went to all the different places. We went swimming. We went to the bet, to the Kvarot. We came back. It was late at night, maybe one o'clock in the morning. As we come back, my parents are waiting up for me. I say to them, it's Thursday night. I say to them, yeah, I t- we sat down, I tell them all about the trip, beautiful. I look at my watch, by the time we finish, we ate something, it's three o'clock in the morning. And I realize, oh my gosh, I forgot to pray our beat. Where's he going to get a minyan at three o'clock in the morning? In Ramot. Right? They call it Ramot because it's remote. It's out in the middle of nowhere. Right? He decides, you know what? But I promised the rabbi, I took on him to pray every minyan. There's no minyanim in Ramot. There's only one place you can get a minyan for Arbit 3 o'clock in the morning. Anyone who's ever lived in Jerusalem will know. I'll tell you this from, from personal experience. Many times I've had minyan late, late, late at night. There's one place. You know where you go? Zichron Moshe. Okay? 
You go to Zichron Moshe, there's this place that's open 24 hours a day. People are always coming to pray there. There's always a guy selling you, you know, stuff outside the door. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I see Uriel has also been there. Right? There's a guy legit selling you chalent at 4 a.m. And if you're buying chalent at 4 a.m., you need to reevaluate your life choices. <laughs> anyway, the guy goes there. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. He thinks, I have to go. It's freezing cold. He goes to what's it called? To the Kvish, the Kvish uh, Mot. This, uh, this, there's no one there. There's no buses. There's no cars. There's no cabs, right? He's waiting, waiting, waiting. He's freezing cold. Eventually, he's like, you know what? Ten more minutes I'm going to wait after this chalas. I, you know, I tried. I did everything I could humanly do to be able to make the minyan. Seven and a half minutes go by. A cab drives up. He flags him down. Where are you going? Zichron Moshe hops in. Travels to the place, he gets there, there's five guys waiting for him in Yan. All five guys are waiting, waiting, waiting. They want to go home. This boy is begging them, please, please don't go. I promised I need the minyan, this, that, and the other, until eventually, at uh, whatever time in the morning, some ungodly hour, 4 a.m., before, you know, it's before sunrise, he gets a minyan. He prays Arbit. He's praying with so much kavana, and he gets to the beracha of Atah Honen La Adam Da'at. Hashem, you grant every person. Brains, sechel, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. And he, he feels something shifts inside of him. He's crying, he's begging HaKadosh Baruch Hu, please help me, help me, help me. He sits there, he's praying Arbit, stuck on that beracha for 45 minutes. By the time he finishes his minyan, his, his uh, uh, amidah, his silent prayer, everyone's gone, he's the only guy left in the shul. But he feels something's changed. It's already so late, he can't even get a ride back. He figures, you know what, I'm just going to stay here till shacharit, until the morning prayer. Uh, what's it called? And then I'll get a, a ride home when the buses start up again, once the day starts. So he, what does he do? What would I do? What would you do? Go to sleep. But he feels like something has shifted in atachonen when he asks God for uh, knowledge. So he goes up to the shelf, he takes out a gemara, and he starts learning. And he can't believe it. For the first time in his life, he understands what the Gemara is saying. He turns to Tosafot, one of the commentators on the side of the Gemara, not easy to understand. And he understands the Tosafot. He's crying in the synagogue at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's the first time in his life he's been able to understand Torah by himself. He learns all the way to Shacharit. He's so excited. He prays Shacharit. His prayer now, Atachonen, is a whole different prayer. It's not begging God for, it's thanking God for understanding. He gets home, he's so excited. He's now been up already the whole day. He gets home Friday morning. He locks himself in his room, takes his gemara from the yeshiva, where he didn't understand one thing. He said, the whole first set, uh, set semester in, in yeshiva, he says, and I was able to learn. I started from the beginning. I couldn't stop. I, I could understand everything. I'm crying, I'm laughing, I'm reading, I'm learning. The whole day, Friday I'm up learning. I get showered right before Shabbat. I go pray with my father in shul. I can't even tell you. I tell my parents at the Shabbat meal. I don't know what happened. Ever since I prayed last night, I can understand. It's like my um, something opened in my mind. The blockage was cleared. The father says to him, he says, okay, I'm so happy for you. They sing Friday night. The boy, Friday night, the meal is over. He opens up a Gemara. The guy hasn't slept now. The whole day Thursday, the whole day Friday, it's Friday night. The father says to him, Rohi, you're already up two days, you know, go to sleep. He says, just a few more minutes. The just a few more minutes turned into an hour, turned into two hours. He winds up staying up the whole night, Friday night. He goes to Shaharit in the morning, having been up Thursday, Friday, now straight to Shabbat morning. Finally, he comes home after he eats something, Shabbat afternoon. He collapses on the couch. My friends, he tells his rabbi, the rabbi that tried to help him, he says, from that moment, I'm a different person. I taste the sweetness in learning. Uh, I, I, I learn like a monster. I understand everything. And I wanted to come to bring this to you because I know how hard you worked with me. My friends, to me this story is not about a boy in yeshiva. Because some of you might not relate to this being a blessing in your life. To me this story talks to one point. His whole life he was praying. His whole life he prayed. His whole life he was trying. What changed? My friends, this is the point I want to teach you. The Mishnah in Avot says, Lifum tsa'ara agra. 
Literally, that means according to the effort, according to the pain, is the reward. Ya'ani, the Gemara already, the Mishnah already trademarked the words, no pain, no gain. Okay? What the Mishnah is telling us, most people understand, is according to the pain is the reward. You do a mitzvah, it's easy, you get paid a little. You do a mitzvah and it's harder, you get paid more. You do a mitzvah and it's murder, you get paid tops. Right? That's how most people understand it. That it's commensurate, it's proportionate to the effort, to the difficulty of doing the right thing. That's how much reward, how much biracha you get for doing the right thing. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.